Hi, Nick Ellis, PC Computer Guy. We're going to be talking about password managers, two-factor authentication, and why you should be doing it. I know that learning something new and doing something different than you have is often met with a lot of resistance, but in today's day and age, if you're not doing these two things, you're leaving yourself very vulnerable, and there's simple solutions that will not only make you much more secure, but make your life easier. Um, but the majority of hacking that goes on today happens by password surfing. This is where somebody gets a password from a website, say just a random database, a message form that you might uh, post things on. That database gets hacked and leaked and spread around the dark web. <clears throat> well, many people know that you use the same username and password for various sites. I do it, lots of places do it. It's just the, na it's just the nature of human beings. We don't want to remember 500 passwords. We don't want to create unique passwords for every site. It's impossible to remember them all. Those that do have a book that their information's outdated, a bunch of scribble all over it, not sure which one's the right one. And um, it just leads to all kinds of problems. But if you're using the same password for website A and it gets leaked on the internet, the bad guys know this. And so they try to go to Chase Bank or Bank of America, PNC, whatever other uh, large websites there are. And they try to use the same username and password. And very frequently, they get in because you're using the same username and password. We can't really do anything about preventing websites from being hacked. That's out of our control. But what we can do is if that website gets hacked, we can mitigate the damage by using unique usernames and passwords for every site. So if they got the information for website A, okay, now they have the information for that, but they don't have the information for all of your other accounts. It also makes your life a lot easier because if that information does get leaked, you don't need to spend the next week going around changing all of your passwords for everything because ahead of time you created a unique user or specifically a password for every single website. So by the bad guys getting into the first website, you just need to change the information from that website and move on. Using a password man manager, also, while it takes a little bit of work to set up, it takes time to either import your information or build up that database of saved usernames and passwords in there, um, it makes it available to all of your devices. Instead of having to carry in a little piece of paper or having a note file that you have synced to your phone, um, the password manager will allow you to access your passwords typically on any web browser. Chrome, Brave, Safari, Firefox, and on your phones as well, your iPads, your tablets, uh, your Android. So you can take this information anywhere. And that makes things really easy. Also, it'll generate the passwords for you. So no longer do you have to sit there and tap your fingers and wonder, what should I make the password for this? What's a good strong password? I really don't know the passwords to any of my stuff. You know why? Because they're very long and very complex complex. So all I have to do is put in a single master password to unlock my vault and then it can autofill all the information in for me. Um, so let's let's dive into this and look a little bit more as to why you should do it first before we show the actual using of it. <clears throat> this right here, I just did a quick Google search while putting this together. Hackers take over 1.1 million accounts by trying reused passwords. The New York State Office of the Attorney General has warned 17 companies that roughly 1.1 million customers have had their accounts compromised in credential surfing attack. Credential surfing is the automated injection of stolen usernames and password pairs into website login forms in order to fraudulently gain access to users' accounts. Many users reuse the same username, password, email, so that if those credentials are stolen from one site, say in a data breach or phishing attack, attackers can use the same credentials on compromised accounts on other services. This is exactly what I was talking about. <clears throat> um, goes into some more of the consequences, such as valuables being purchased on your behalf, using things to send spam on your, like as if they're you, um, identity theft, etc. What can users do? First thing here, do not reuse passwords. That's what we're talking about. And how do you not reuse passwords but keep track of them all? Use a password manager. <clears throat> There's also a great site, Have I Been Pwned, right here. We'll go ahead and open it up and we'll just put in um, email address. Uh, I, don't know, I don't know. You can put in your email address here. <clears throat> oh no, 
my email has been found in breaches. Don't freak out if you see this. Pretty much everybody's going to have this, unless you have a brand new account. And then it gives you the list of all the places that your account has been hacked. So, <coughs> uh, and then it gives also what information they took from it right here, email addresses and passwords. So if I use the same email address and password for whatever this was, by the way, a lot of this stuff is not stuff that you directly sign up for, but information that gets sold or um, if you see things on here, like I have no clue really what this is. It's just information being sold between companies. Um, however, if I use the same password everywhere, I need now need to change everything on all of my accounts or risk the bad guys getting into my stuff. And we don't want that. So uh, this is a great site to check your stuff. You can also check passwords. This is a legitimate bona fide site. Um, you can do research on the site if, if you're unsure, but one of my passwords, another password. Password has been seen five times before on the dark web. So some really old password that I used 15 years ago is out there. This is the importance of why you need to change your passwords from time to time. But um, the password manager that I like to use is Bitwarden. Um, I like Bitwarden because it's open source, which means all the code is available for people to publicly review. And you're not a programmer. I might not be a programmer, but there are people out there. And if there's weird things going on with it, they will... Um, post on forums and it'll become news pretty quickly. So even though you're not a coder, I'm not a coder, you'll still hear that there's something fishy going on. So by having an open source, the company that creates the software is essentially saying, hey, feel free to look at everything that's in it before you use it so that you know as much as you can that it's safe to use. That's something that a lot of the password managers don't have, but Bitwarden does. Um, the passwords, as you'll see, we'll go through the setup. They're encrypted. Um, it's not a password, really. It's more of an encryption key. This means that there's no password reset for it. But that's a good thing because you don't want somebody, let's say at Bitwarden, to just go in and reset your password and then have access to all of your information. Because if you store all of your, your uh, usernames and passwords in there and somebody can just reset the password for it and get access to everything, that would be problematic. So what they do is all of your passwords, all of your information is wrapped in an encrypted file and the file can only be decrypted with your master password passphrase. Um, so when we do this, you'll need to create a unique password that is good and strong that you've not used anywhere else before or a passphrase is even better. Length is more important than complexity. But if you do this, um, then all the information that you store inside of it is encrypted with that master passphrase so that not even the company themselves can get the information. However, if you forget it, because it's not really a password, there's no password reset for it, which means that all the data that's in there is lost. So if you forget your master passphrase, there's, uh, there's problems there. So don't forget the master passphrase, but I'm asking you to remember one password. So all I want, just one password. Remember that password, make it a good one. You don't have to type it in every time. I mean, there's various settings, security settings, but the default settings, you don't have to type it in every single time. Because we're putting all of our eggs in one basket, we want to have maybe a little bit more security. This is why I resisted things for so long using a password manager because it made me feel uncomfortable putting all my eggs in one basket. But if you use something like Bitwarden, you can also set up two-factor authentication. If you set up two-factor authentication, not only does an attacker need to have your master passphrase that you aren't using anywhere else, but they also need access to, say, your cell phone or whatever you use for two-factor authentication. If they don't have that, they still can't get into the account. Some of the features that um, Bitwarden provides, it can save and autofill your logins. You can have the random password generator and you can determine is it uppercase, lowercase, special characters, all of that good jazz and how long it is. You can store credit cards in there, identities, so that it'll autofill, first name, last name, things like that. Notes, I use the notes quite a bit myself personally. If I wanna save some information that's sensitive, then I'm gonna save it in Bitwarden's notes because one, it'll sync to all of my devices and two, it'll be encrypted with that password. Also, when you if you set it up on your uh, phone or tablet or whatever, 
mine set up with a fingerprint scanner so I can unlock the vault without even typing in that long passphrase. I can just use my fingerprint to do that and now my vault is unlocked and I can have autofill information not just in the web browser but if you use various apps on your phone it can autofill the information in those apps as well. Um, so let's kind of uh, let's go over here and take a look at Bitwarden. Here's from Forbes and they're talking about Bitwarden itself. It's a good rating. It's free. Um, so that's always a good plus. <clears throat> Security. Bitwarden adopts zero knowledge encryption. It means that they don't know your information. You can sync your stuff to them, but they don't really know what you're syncing. Approach to protecting your data, which means that not even Bitwarden staff can access the, here it goes, the information that you store. 256-bit encryption, considerably a virtually unbreachable way to encrypt data, keeps every item in your password vault secure. In addition to keeping passwords, you can also save other information, like I just said. <clears throat> Two-step authentication um, so that you can keep people out of your account. Bitwarden also does two-factor stuff built into it if you pay for the, um, the various plans that they have instead of using the free one. Bitwarden is compliant with all of these various different things, which makes sense because their whole focus is privacy and security. <clears throat> but as they point out, should you forget your master password, you lose it, the information's gone. <clears throat> There's this right here that we won't get into as a way to recover your information, but just remember one password. That's all you need to do. If you really can't remember it, then print it out and put it in your safe or something. <clears throat> so I just wanted to point this out. Uh, so it's a well-known program that uh, gets recommendations from lots of places. So let's go and actually set it up. Here, um, well, here, let's see, Bitwarden. We'll just do a search for that. <coughs> We're here at Bitwarden. I've created blank accounts for everything just so that we can go through this together. We're gonna hit the get started. Email address. I created a temporary email address just for this demonstration. Master password. Again, they give you the reminder here. Passwords cannot be recovered if you forget it. So this is that one password that I want you to remember. A good long one. Uh, some song lyrics that you like, a uh, Bible verse, a uh, phrase that you say to somebody a lot. Um, we'll make up something here. And we will re-enter it. And then you can do the optional thing if you want to as well for the reminder. Create account. Account has been created. Now we're gonna log into it. And I'm gonna log in. I have my account now, and one of the cool things is should you happen to be at a friend's house and you don't have your phone and you don't have Bitwarden set up with it and you, you just don't have access, you can go to the website and you can log into it and then you can view your information through the website as well. However, on the daily, you won't be using the website. There's no need to use the website. Ultimately, we're going to end up with plugins for our web browsers or the app on our phone. <clears throat> so, um,. We are going to, I like, we talked about the two-factor authentication. We'll get back to that. Let's go ahead and load the plugin. So we can close this really all together. We're done. We've created our account with Bitwarden. Now we need to get the plugin for our web browser that we want to use. I'm using Brave. Brave is a Chrome-based browser or a Chromium-based browser. So it's essentially the same for any Chromium-based browser, but... Uh, you can get it from the Bitwarden site under their download. They have downloads up here. You can load the full Windows program, which is nice to have, but doesn't really do a lot for you unless you're managing a whole bunch of passwords. If you're going through deleting, cleaning things up, these will be nice for that because it'll open in its own little window and then you can see everything and go through and manage them that way. Talking about daily use, so I'm gonna choose 
Chrome Brave 61 happens in the other. It's going to take me to the same place. <clears throat> All right, Bitward pass Password Manager. Notice we're right at the Chrome Store. Add to Brave. Add extension. And now it's here. So this this one right here, the, this is where the extension went. I'm going to pin it so that it always stays out and I can always see it. But your extension is probably going to be somewhere up here. I'm going to hit login. Log in with my email address. And that master password that I created. And here we are. If you spend probably about an hour, some people it might be five minutes, other people it might be an hour. If you spend some time with this, you'll see how much easier it makes everything. It does take a little bit to getting, uh, of getting used to, just like if you switch from Firefox to Chrome or Chrome to Firefox or any other kind of change that happens, it takes you a little bit to get used to. This will take you a little bit to get used to as well. But for the amount of additional security you get by having unique strong passwords on every site, and the convenience of not having to remember them all, just a single master password is enormous for the, say, hour that you put into getting used to using this. Um, so right now we have nothing in here. I've done that intentionally, so we can close this. We don't need any of this stuff up. It just stays here in the browser all the time now. Um, now I'm gonna sign into this temporary Microsoft account that I created. Here, up here at the top, should Bitwarden remember this password for you? And I'm gonna hit save, and we'll say no, don't stay signed in here. So now, if you notice, Bitwarden up here has a one, and if I click on it, here's the information. It's telling me on this site, the one means that there's only one uh, site that's saved in here that has Outlook.com. This also, by the way, helps for phishing. Because if you get directed to a fake Outlook site, Bitwarden's not going to recognize it as having credentials saved for that site. So you won't get this one up here. You'll click on it and your list will be blank. It won't have any information in there for you to autofill into the scammy website. Another big plus of using this. So we've got one in here saved. So now if I log out, if I want to sign back in, Microsoft does two steps. So the first step is the username no no it kept me signed in um let's see if i go through the entire sign out process here and then go back to outlook and sign in go just go up here click it next password's in there if it's not you go up here you click it it'll plug in the password you're signed back in okay now you see bitward is asking you, should I save it for you? You can also create folders if you wanted to store things in different categories, say business, personal, whatever. I'm gonna go ahead and hit save on here. <clears throat> now, I intentionally didn't use the generator, but if you are signing up for a new site, you'd wanna go here, and if you hit the generator, this is a fab one of those fabulous features. I like to increase the length of mine. The longer you make it, the less likely it is to be cracked. I like to include the special characters, so right here, capitals, lowercase numbers, special characters. And so right here is the generated thing, and I can copy that. And when I'm at the sign-up form, then I just paste that in the sign-up form. And then the same thing, log back out, log back in, have it saved. Okay. The reason why I didn't do it is I want to demonstrate changing of the password. So we'll go, we'll do it on the Microsoft account. <clears throat> so we'll go over here and my Microsoft account. <clears throat> That's working a lot faster. And then security. And here we go. Change password. All right. <clears throat> so we're at the change password page. If you go ahead and if you click this, you see they're not quite sure what's where. So what I do is in here, I'll show you a little bit more that we have here. You can copy the username by clicking this. You can copy just the password by clicking this, which is all that we need because we have current password here. And then they also have the view where you can, again, you can actually look at your password. We're going to change this, by the way. Um, you can copy the password here. If you have 
previous passwords, you'll be able to see them in here. You can delete the item, you can do several things in here. So uh, you can do all of that. So what I wanna do is just copy the password here. I'm gonna paste it. And then for our new password, I want to use the generator to make a unique, strong, secure password. So I'm gonna go to generator here. Beautiful, copy, go over here and paste it in here and save. Do you want Bitwarden to update your password? <coughs> the screen cycle through too quick. We do. So there's a couple ways you can do it. You can either go in here and hit edit, and then you can modify the password here and save it, <coughs> or log out and log back in. Since we have it copied, there it goes, update. If you log out and log back in and it has the old stuff, it can enter the new. We'll see if it, yep, it already got it. So we've got the new password on here. So that's how to use Bitwarden. Kind of like a quick, we changed a password, we generated a password, um, got to see some of the features of it, how to edit and use it. And notice we're not at the website, we just have the plugin installed in our browser. You can go to the App Store or the Play Store and you can do the same thing. Um, if you close and reopen the browser, then it's just gonna ask you for your master password one time to sign into Bitwarden, and then you can interact with this for filling out any of the other stuff. However, since we're gonna be storing passwords in here, this is where we want to set up two-factor authentication. We want to use something to ensure, not only just with our password, but with um, uh, two-factor authentication that even if somebody gets our password for Bitwarden, they still can't get into it. For Microsoft account, we're gonna to go to the advanced security options. <clears throat> and email, not the best to use because somebody could potentially have access to your email account. I, SMS is not particularly the best thing to do either. Here we go. So <clears throat> in the sign-in page here, we're going to use an app. These are the most secure, but you have to buy things and I don't just to make it simple. This will give you almost all the security. We don't want to use email and I don't personally like to use this. So we like to use an authenticator app and or set up with a different authenticator app. Once we do that, we get this QR code. So on our phone, we get whatever two-factor, the Microsoft two-factor app, or in my preference, Authy. You can go to the App Store, the Play Store, download Authy, A-U-T-H-Y, Twilio Authy. <clears throat> and you'll end up with a program like this that has a whole bunch of different codes that rotate every 60 seconds. We wanna add this new account. So once we've got the app set up here, and the app will ask you while you're setting it up, do you want to create a backup and set up, uh, register the phone number so that they can back up the information and they'll say, enter a backup passphrase. Think of it as a similar thing as Bitwarden. All of your two-factor authentication stuff will be secured with that passphrase, passcode, whatever that I asked you to set up. That's why I like Authy, because you can move between different devices if your phone breaks, you can restore that information to a different phone. You just use your phone number, use your password, and then you'll have your two-factor things again. Google Authenticator doesn't do that. I also, when I get to this point where I'm ready to add the account from the website, I like to take a screenshot of this QR code and then I put it into a Word document that's password protected so that should I need to scan it again, I can. Authy should prevent you from having to do that, but it's just there. So I'm gonna click the three dots in the top right here on Android, and I'm gonna click Add Account. I know you can't really see too much here, but it's telling me to scan whatever QR code I have. So I'm gonna hit the Scan QR Code. Once I scan it, that automatically, Authy's nice in that it'll give you the nice little Microsoft icon if it knows what the site is. It says Microsoft Account, my email address, I hit Save. Now this is saved in here and the code will change every 60 seconds. There's this bar at the top that tells you how, far, how much time you have to enter it. So if somebody wants to get in the account, they need this, but you don't need to enter it every single time. Now, before we're not done yet with the website. The website doesn't know that we've scanned it yet, so they wanna verify that we've got the information correctly before they go ahead and enable this. So I need to enter the code down here, 018713. Again, this changes every 60 seconds. Go ahead and click Next. 
boom, we're done. We have an Authenticator app, much more secure. So anytime you can use the Authenticator app, go ahead and do it. That's the best way to do it, in my opinion, where you don't have to buy additional hardware. The additional hardware is more secure, but this is this gets you, ni I'm gonna say 98% of the security without having to buy anything. Um, Two-step verification to increase your security, your passwords require two-step to sign in. So go ahead and turn that on now. Next. Right here. This code you can use to get into your account if you don't have that QR code that you can rescan. Remember I said save it in a Word document. If you don't have that, and you save this, you can also use that. Be careful about where you save it though, because if somebody else gets access to this, then they will be able to get into it. So just be careful with that. <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and say next, and nope, we don't need to do any of this stuff. So next and finish here. Okay, so we're set up and we're good to go with the two factor. So if I sign out here, When I sign in using this, because I don't have to type things anymore because I saved it in here. Notice I didn't have to go through the things again because I've already signed in. This is where I'm saying it doesn't bug you every single time. But if I open a private window, this is essentially like using another computer kind of sort of. And I go to sign in. And then I enter the password and I'm going to grab the password over here, copy password, go over here and paste it. It's not in here because it's in private mode. You can change that. Now notice it's asking me for the second factor code. So it doesn't bug you every time. It's not that big of an inconvenience to do the two factor just once in a while, or if it's a new device that it doesn't recognize, if somebody in India steals your information and tries to log into your account, it's gonna say, hey, I'm not quite sure here. Give me the second factor code. <clears throat> and there you go, we're back in, okay? Doing these two things will vastly improve your security posture on the internet. So much of our stuff is stored online these days. I have some customers that will say, I don't do online banking, so none of my stuff is online. <laughs> your stuff's still online. You don't. You think the bank takes yours and puts it in a file somewhere? No, it's all there. Um, but doing this stuff will be a huge improvement over what people typically do, reusing the same usernames and passwords and not having two-factor authentication. So uh, Bitwarden, we want to set up the two-factor authentication on. Very important, since that is where everything is kept. Uh, this is our master passphrase. Notice there's no password reset here. Log in, and we're gonna go up here, account settings, and security, two-step login. Enabling two-step login, you can be permanently locked out if you lose access to the second factor login. This is why I was saying Authy with the backup, the recovery codes that you can download once I set it up, um, or taking the screenshot and saving it in a Word document that you password protect with a good password. So we're gonna set up an Authenticator app. Manage, it's gonna ask me are you really you? And then, here's the Authenticator app. This is Authy right here. And same steps. You take your, you go into your Authy app on your phone, click the three dots, add account, scan, scan it, Bitwarden account save. Now we got the code. It's telling us verify the code. 727643 is what I currently have. And while we're here, we'll take a screenshot of this. Enable. 
<coughs> you can save this information separately if you want, but I have it in a screenshot. Close. You can view the recovery codes now, should you want to do that and download them. But again, I like to just have the QR code. So I did a screenshot of the QR code. So if we go to Word and we create a blank document, super secret info. And now if I need to, okay, well, first we'll save it. Password protect document. A lot of people don't know that this exists. If we go to file, protect document, encrypt with a password. This is just like the other things we were talking about. It's not a password that you can reset. It's actually an encryption key. You're encrypting the document, which is good because then that eliminates many of the ways that people get into it. Create a good strong one. Re-enter it and then we'll save it and just throw it on the desktop. Super secret info, save. Now, if I close this document to reopen it, super secret info, it's going to ask me for a password. And if I enter the wrong password, I can't see what's in there anymore. But if I get locked out for whatever reason of my two factor authentication things and the authy restore doesn't work or something, we can go back into here and get back into the document and then take our Authy app and we can rescan this QR code just right off the Word document. <clears throat> by doing that, you'll ensure that you don't get hosed and locked out by having this additional security. So I think that pretty much wraps up the primary things for security. Two-factor authentication. I prefer Authy uh, and Bitwarden, which is but they're both free and will do a whole lot to keep you secure. We went back to the, first we created the Bitwarden account, then we added it to our browser. After we added it to our browser, we added a few things into it. Um, if you have a whole bunch of passwords saved in your browser, you can export those passwords and then import them into Bitwarden. It's beyond the scope of this, but <clears throat> um, then we demonstrated how to change some of the passwords to create the long, strong Bitwarden ones that we don't have to remember, Bitwarden will do it for us as long as we remember our single Bitwarden master passphrase. Then we went and enabled two-factor authentication using Authy on a couple of the different apps so that um, you could see how the process was of that and it's pretty easy to use. The key here is that it's a second device, something separate. If somebody gets into your computer and gets your password or whatever, they still need access to your phone in order to get into your accounts if you have two-factor authentication set up on it. And if we're not doing it via SMS, we remove the whole phone company, sends the text to the wrong place, or somebody at the phone company gets duped and activates somebody else's phone with your phone number, a hacker that is using social engineering to try to hack into your account. They won't be able to do that because it's here on your phone. Hope this has been useful really really try to do this i know for a lot of people it'll be like oh this is so much work i don't want to do this but it'll vastly improve your security it'll make your life much easier in the long run and it's really not that difficult the time that you spend learning and adjusting to it you will be paid back for significantly by not having to change passwords because you use the same password on every site thank you very much for watching